But I think now I have my guest here. I will be bringing my guest in uh, shortly to help me look at this. Because this one, you know, in, in my place, they say that snake where one person see, you know, they say it becomes python. And join me to welcome my good sister, thank you, Briggs. Good evening. Welcome to Injenja Media TV. Good evening. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you very much, sis. You know, this evening we will just have, um, you know, a normal conversation. I think before you join me, I've been ranting my life away on the <laughs> bad fuel we now buy here. You know, a nation. You know, let's start with that one. <laughs> What's, what do you think? A nation. We have an MPC. We have DPRA. We have all the chemical, chemical. We have oil. We drill our own oil. We export it. They refine it and bring bad one to us. I mean, isn't that a tragedy? Well, um, good evening, everyone. Uh, the truth of the matter. Sorry, the your, truth your, of the matter. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Okay, it it was, I think it uh, turned itself around. Anyway, yeah. um, the truth it, of the it, matter it, it, is uh, Nigeria is a tragedy. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Hello? Okay. Um, is the focus, yeah, okay, the focus is all right, too. Okay, um, yes. the truth yes. of the matter is that Nigeria itself um, is a tragedy. And that's just uh, and that's just the truth, because the problem we have is the the inability or the refusal um, of our people, whether politicians or businessmen um, or ordinary people like you and I, who have taken it upon ourselves to uh, to participate in the way that we do. I think most times um, people refuse to tell themselves the truth and um, or refuse to hear the truth and actually feel that somehow if we ignore if we ignore the truth um that everything is just going to turn around and be all right the issue of um lifting oil and sending it abroad at whatever price that uh, the nigerian government does it and at whatever time and place we're told that this is how much we have lifted. And then to find ourselves in a position where we buy back what we call finished product mm. um, into, into Nigeria is a tragedy. It is a tragedy because we do not know how much oil, whether it is uh, bonny light, whether it is Brent, whatever it is called, we don't know how much we are lifting out of this country. Um, what, we, what we are told depends on what the oil companies and the middlemen tell us that they have lifted. That's one. Then you, you bring in a finished product. How crazy is it that we do not know the quality of what we're bringing in? Sure. Sometimes we don't even know the quantity of what we're bringing in because the middlemen tell us how much they have brought in. The, in my analysis, even the NNPC is not aware, the so-called NNPC that is the one that is supposed to to bring in import this finished product um, does not know how much is coming in we've been told stories of sometimes that uh, they bring in empty vessels or vessels that are ghost i call them ghost vessels because they uh, they don't exist but they only exist on paper just the same way uh, things like um, the, the, the budget for, say, the and, uh, NDDC or the budget for the Ministry of Niger Delta 
or any of the agencies. We don't know. We are told and we get to accept. So how is it that we are not aware of the quality, quality of the finished product that is coming in? So it means that Nigeria is not involved at the point where this product is loaded for testing, for instance. So if it is tested at point of loading, then we should be sure what is coming in is quality. And unless, of course, it is changed mid-ocean, um, mid that they change it and it becomes contaminated uh, product. Now, we are subsidizing, uh, <laughs> we're subsidizing product Let's see, so, so, that is contaminated. Hold on. Um, hold on here. Um, hold on. Hold on here for clarity. Let hmm. us think about this. You know, there is a, a, a refinery that has quality assurance procedures. Mm -hmm. There is a refinery that is doing this, whether we are buying or whether they are refining for us, there are procedures, there are test yeah. procedures. It was tested, yeah. it was signed off, yeah. it was loaded, yeah. it came into Nigeria. Yeah. We have a people we pay. Their job is go back, go to work every month, every day. Do this mm -hmm. for the nation. You get paid millions. And mm -hmm. it slipped everything. Loaded into tankers. Distributed mm -hmm. across Nigeria. Until Nigeria mm -hmm. now, who now came into... Because how did this thing start? People who have... I passed my neighbor. Started mm -hmm. buying petrol with mm -hmm. uh, uh, ever water can that is transparent. Mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. uh, are you people selling tea for us? Because it looked like uh, over tin with milk. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine. So what beats me and beats me silly is, I mean, you know, thinking about it, you told me that there was nobody in authority that conspired for this to happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not possible that nobody knew mm -hmm. He passed mm -hmm. all these processes abroad, Nigeria, to a point mm -hmm. that it was only the end user who noticed it. I mean, that is that is criminal. I, that of of we, course it is. Of course, of course it is. That is exactly what it is. And and don't forget that we are subsidizing. Our, our listeners should uh, you, you know should take a step back and listen to this. That is that we have lifted this thing out. It has been refined. It's been brought back to us. And at the point of retail, at the time where you and I buy it and it knocks the engine or it spoils the, I better pass my neighbor, or somebody's uh, 10 million or 2 million uh, diesel generator, or car, then we now realize that the product is contaminated. It's crazy. But then that is how Nigeria itself is. That is how we, we vote in or they vote in because I don't vote in for the politicians that are there now. Now, this is how we vote people in and then come to realize that they don't have capacity as they as they call it, the capacity is now the new word in Nigeria now attached to politics because um, uh, everybody who wants to run now is claiming uh, to have capacity and their capacity. campaigners are claiming that they have no. capacity. I don't no, think that they, have they the, even they have in Nigeria capacity on tests. understand. Well, uh, they, uh, they have capacity uh, to... Uh, to uh, to run Nigeria, you hear our brother saying that uh, he's going to pilot uh, Nigeria. Nigeria is uh, a seven four seven that he's going to pilot, and that um, and that uh, if we feel some turbulences, we shouldn't worry. Should he's in control, and that um, it, it's just crazy. It really is just um, insane, as far as I'm concerned. Honestly, I, it's insane. 
I don't know. I don't know these people how they get to make decisions on our behalf. You know, and as long as we allow uh, people like this not to be held accountable, I mean, uh, the the Ministry of Petroleum, the NNPC, it has a chairman or a director or whatever they do. There is somebody in charge in NDDC. And then uh, a couple of days ago, I had one of the, um, I said NDDC, NNPC. A couple of days ago, watching the news, I had one, uh, one of the NMPC staff, senior staff say that they are still at a learning curve. I mean, you've been importing uh, finished product for de decades and you are still at a learning curve. I, I don't understand what is there what to learn learning? in importing. Well, we've seen what there is to learn. I, in importing a, a, a finished product. We don't know what we're doing. They don't know what they're doing. There is no place else in the world. I don't know, Mazi, if you remember, a few weeks ago, a country in South America stopped the, uh, the hierarchy, the director or how many directors of an oil company from leaving their country. They were held under house arrest. There is nothing else you can call it. They refuse them to leave their country where there is pollution to go back to their own country. They held them, you know. And so in Nigeria, the army and the police and the Navy and the Air Force will escort them to the airport. We are, now, wow. we are, indeed, we are indeed, we are indeed in a terrible time. Uh, honestly, we are indeed in a terrible time. And you know, the more you think about it, the more it hurts, basically. But at the end of the day, um, the, the 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 news there that I wanted us to you know to look at the news there for me is this: if we look at this uh, data on the screen, now the news hmm. here for me is that the value of um, what they are proposing to use in cleaning it up is humongous 201 billion now mm -hmm. if you multiply uh if you if let, let's say for argument's sake for the 170 million uh, liters and we say we are going to clean each you know clean if you divide that by one six sorry if you multiply that by one six uh, five which is the pump price it's going to be gave, giving you about 28.1 billion so the question is, and we still say in this nation that we have a minister of petroleum. I don't know. And, you know, in all this, nobody is getting, nobody is getting punished. Nobody is getting, you know, just, it appears nobody is in charge. Is anyone actually That's, in charge? That is the truth. That is just the truth. Um, um, Nigeria, I've said it before in the past that the Nigeria that we definitely are in um, in in twenty since twenty fifteen is on is not even on autopilot. It's on it's not even on autopilot. It is mm. a train. I actually described it as a train. A moving train, a fast speed train with no brakes. And so where, where, whenever it gets to where it is that it's supposed to be going to, it will crash. That's just the truth. That is just mm -hmm. the truth. It's just incredible. People, I mean, Mazi, people are laughing at Nigeria. How, how does a country the so-called sixth largest oil producing country maybe by now i hear uh, one other country has overtaken us or something like that um that produces so much crude oil and um finds itself where it is lifting this oil out subletting it for refining and we have four refineries in Nigeria. And we have the one man 
building the largest refinery in the world. My brother, even America and China have not ventured into building the largest refinery in the world. What is the, I don't understand the hunger to be identified as building the largest refinery in the world. Are we going to supply the whole of the world with finished product? Who are, is America going to buy the finished product from us? To, uh, well, to, we sell, uh, uh, to sell in America. And yet, and, and, and yet Mazi, this same largest uh, refinery in the world, the country, Nigeria, is borrowing billions of dollars, billions of dollars to invest, to invest in the largest refinery in the world based in Lagos so that it can now invest in the largest refinery in the world. In the meantime, the so-called investor, Nigeria, has four refineries that are redundant, that are not refining anything. So you have to ask yourself, how did we, I mean, how on earth did we get here? How? And that is why, at the end of the day, many people resort to, to calling on God because what you cannot do as a Christian, you believe that the only person who can do it in God. And so we become ridiculous that we can do things for ourselves and yet we're unable to do those things. And then we call on God to do these things. God didn't vote for this government. Nigerians did. Your people did, my people did, people from Niger Delta, people from Southeast, Southwest, um, people from the uh, Middle Belt. They voted this government into power. And today they are calling on God. God did not vote for these people. We voted for, for these people. I'm not amongst the people that voted for this government. Nigerians claim to have voted for this government. And yet they're calling on God. Well, it's amazing. I think, I think Nigerians are beaten. They are, we are, you know, we are beaten down to a point where we can only believe um, that it is only God that can do certain things for us. But then